Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Citizen Sleeper. When last we left off, we had some automatic drones working on the Ambergris over here. We met a talking vending machine and managed to start to figure out and piece some things together about this entity that's hunting us in Sleeperland. But before we can move any further, we're going to have to end this cycle, moving us closer to being hunted by God knows what. Okay, not as much energy I should have eaten. Alright, let's go ahead and get into this. So, where to go? We could do one more cycle, then the Ambergris will be fixed. Um, where are we in the exchange? We need two more for Trusted Trader. We could play the exchange, which could very well help us. We've got a, a six we can use. That would be good. Why don't we try that here? Because that the faster we get access to a ship mine, the better. Because we need that in order to deal with this hunter that's after us. So the flow of chits and components in the exchange is complex, but a sharp eye and some tight trades can net you a good margin. Let's go for it. 19 cryo, trusted trader, all done. Awesome. So, let's see, is that this? Fabricate ship mind. Input three ship mind fa fragments. So I've got one. Oh. I guess I need to have three all in one go. So, my wonder is, that's not in data, so that's something that we have to salvage. So I wonder if we spend some time at Dragos' yard, if that's the best option. Um, ooh, a merchant freighter's in, though. So we could spend cryo and get a hey, ship mine fragments. Well, isn't that nice? So we got one and two. And we got all the three that we need. Uh, let's see, haggle over prices. You and the merchants know that these fragments are overpriced, but are they willing to admit it? You'll get one chance to see. I need a, I need to be have actual engage skill in order to do that anyway. Alright. So let's make this ship mind. Ship mine core X. What is X? So the ship mine core don't know what X is. It says the fabricator whirs and crackles as it assembles the ship mind. It opens to reveal a, comp a completed but heavily dented unit. Okay, so I could fabricate as many as I need, it seems like. Drive complete, one upgrade point. Hell yes. So what do we want? Do we want to go for a plus one in, ex in engineering? I think that would probably help us. I think that's what we were trying to go for before anyway. Um, though we could probably go for into it, which would give us um, potential positive and negative outcomes on dice actions, which would be really useful. Or we could do Thrill Seeker, chance to gain energy after an, any engage action. Uh, I think I'm going to go for the plus one here, with predictive reasoning being a second, uh, a second choice for next level up. Icebreaker, agent nodes give double data rewards. That would be good. Let's go for the plus one. Okay, let's go back. Um, I think, okay, so we got a one and we've got these two. If I go to Dragos's yard, we've got a plus one to engineer. So that's just going to jump that up to a four. Still have a 25% chance that something goes horribly wrong. With danger, that, that could leave us with less energy, less health. All the above. Oh god, am I going to risk it? I'm not going to risk it. I can't do that. As much as I want that that extra one there. Let's go ahead and give the Intuit here a chance. Safe action. Let's see if we can get Winter Light done. Yes, we did. Positive outcome. Hell yes. Okay. Squeezed into the office at the entrance to the yard, you lay out everything you have on the winter light across the metal desk. 
Your makeshift forensic notes glow on Dragos' old writing slate, overlapping lines and scrawled annotations. A set of drone scans filled the small terminal with a spectrum of colors, a heat map of damage and decay, a crumpled printout from the office's ship registry lies beside them, synthetic paper so thin it is almost transparent. Um, let's look at the printout. A plain list shows the registration history of the winter light, the gaps between the entries tantalizingly opaque. Its first registration was a couple of thousand cycles ago on this very station, logged at the central hub. From here, the registry tells the story of a busy ship, one that rarely stayed on station for more than a few cycles, and often took on voyages that kept it away from the eye for up to a hundred years. The winter light got little rest. Alright, just take out the monitor. Reactor failure. That is the verdict that anybody would have returned after a cursory glance at these stacked heat maps of the remains of the winter light. On the terminal screen, the ship is shown in section, blotches of color marking the approximate damage the ship sustained. Dominating the view is a single blood-red rose radiating from the ship's fraction drive. A simple story, a catastrophic failure of the drive cord leading to a fatal hull breach. A well-documented failure likely brought on by wear or misuse. But you aren't looking at the rows of the reactor, you are looking at a smaller, paler mark, one that might be easy to miss at first glance. It is, a th it is thumbprint size and delicately placed over the control servos for the ship's main external airlock. Interesting. It suggests a controlled shaped explosion, one designed to punch through the hole and allow access to the airlock from the outside. You are looking at it because it is troubling you. All right, look at the slate. Your attempts at a reconstruction of the winter light before its fatal accident consists of a series of overlapping sketches and diagrams showing possible layouts and configurations of the gutted, of this, the gutted cutter. This was no off-the-shelf model. It was heavily modified, and heavily modified, parts replaced with inventive configurations, the new retrofitted into the old, handmade joints and reconditioned filters. This was someone's pride and joy, a lifetime project kept running with care and intuition. It also contained a set of hidden compartments. You missed them at first, where the hole had been thickened, the corners rounded to disguise the change, but they are there. An old ship, many cycles under its belt, carefully maintained, a reactor failure preceded by a carefully concealed external entity, a suite of hidden compartments tucked away. This was the winter light, and this was its story. But that's not the full story, because there's something else. It is little more than a list, a tiny chunk of data you were able to pull from the ship's systems. The main systems were fried, of course. But the winter light had a separate system, one tucked away in one of its hidden compartments, armored, air-walled. This list, the only recoverable piece from the whole system, is a partial inventory. It details the contents of the hidden compartments. Some of it you recognize, some of it you don't. Shipmind ROMs, Shimmer, Cryo Chain Codes, and then the final entry, Passenger Sleeper. Hang on, is this what we came in on? It details the contents of the hidden compartments. Some of it you recognize, some of you don't. Shit, mine, ROM, Shimmer, Cryo, Chain Codes, and then Passenger Sleeper. You stare at the list on the terminal and try not to think about what it was like arriving here. In the cold for so long, half frozen in on the freight container, had this sleeper been smarter, luckier? Oh, so this is not us, this is somebody else. How had they convinced the Winter Light, a smuggler ship, if you ever saw one, to extract them from Essen, from Essen, Corp, from Essen Arp? Luckier, you laugh, there had been no remains found in any of the winter lights compartments. You had checked. They weren't so lucky, you guess. Not in the end. You hold up a vial of stabilizer to the light. This was all you found in their compartment, a parting gift from S and Arp. Well, it won't go to waste now. You put it back in your pocket. The thought still bothers you, though. Two ships carrying sleepers coming into the same yard, two one after the other. That feels wrong. Yeah, no kidding. That does seem weird. You flick back and forth between data sets on the terminal, thinking, and you see that thumbprint again, the mark of someone trying to get in, someone who entered the winter light with precision and speed, and when they were done, left the reactor to clean up the rest. The thought of that person makes you shiver. So somebody was trying to 
get in and make the ship blow up to kill off the sleeper? Is that why? Suddenly, the office door creaks open. Drago stands in the doorway, staring at the equipment and notes that you have assembled. What's all this? He snatches the slate from the desk faster than you realize he could move. You running an investigation here? What am I paying you for? The drone on his shoulder starts whining shrilly, his anger passing to it through his implants. Where is this ship from? Leave this alone. He starts shaking his head. I know you have a lot of questions, but this isn't the way. He turns away, muttering to himself, This is the last thing I need. The ship had a sleeper on it. Dragos freezes, suddenly angry. What did you say? He pushes past you to look at the terminal at the list. He, si he shakes his head. So what? Aren't all of you trying to escape? You're lucky it was you that made it out alive, not them. He folds his arms indignantly. Drago seems to steady himself and then turns back to you, the heat map of the reactor failure reflected in his headset's glassy eyes. I've given you a place to stay. I've given you work. I've... He stumbles over the words, unsure of what to say. There's plenty others who would have sold you on, turned you in. But not me. No. I know. He softens. Look, you helped me too. He quiets the drone. I've done well by you, and you've returned the favor. He straightens up and clears his throat. But this obsession you have with this ship isn't going to work for me. I can't have you making my clients nervous. I can't have you digging up whatever it is you are after. He sighs. You can't work here anymore. Oh, what about the winter light? He reaches over and switches the monitor off. Forget about the damn ship. You have enough to keep you up. Dragos reaches across you and flicks off the terminal. As the light of the monitor dies, a kind of eerie calm falls on both of you. Whatever this was, it is done. You made it out, sleeper. That means you have to move on. Someone killed that ship and its crew. And you want to meet them? He shakes his head. We are done here. In the dark, Drago's headset glints, and you wish for a moment you could see his eyes and meet them. Maybe then he would understand. You get up from the desk, and Drago gathers the notes, stuffing them into a po pocket of his overalls. He holds the door for you, his headset as expressionless as always. You can stay in the container. I won't take that from you. Don't come back. His voice is final, definite, with an edge of disappointment. You walk out of the office, and then out of the yard, not stopping to look back. You leave the yard, thumbing the vial in your pocket, knowing that this at least guarantees you a little more time. And as you walk, your mind once again drifts back to that person who killed the winter light, and whether or not that person will come for you. Ooh. Okay, so, well, we're out of fucking luck over here, unfortunately, but I think... I can work in the shipyard, maybe. I don't have anything for Endure, but I could do the Engineer thing. The only one way to get to know the shipyard is to work here. No tourists here. You don't have connections, but you do have skills. If you get a shipbuilder to notice them, you might be in. Let's see if we can use this three here. And, uh, and fingers crossed. Positive outcome. All right. So I got five cryo. And I got two to the yard hand. Excellent. So what do I got? I got a ship mind. Oh, I need the ship mind over here, don't I? Let's go ahead and do this. Input ship mind core. Neovend wants to be smuggled out of the dock. Neovend is ready to attempt imprinting. They want you to help. Okay. What does that mean? Sleeper, I must express plan before we begin. Neovend is impatient, the prospect of being free of the vending machine clearly too much to take. Shipmind has no output features, will be mute until slotted. You won't be able to speak? Correct. Do not worry. The servo motors in the machine begin to rev, Neovend's anxiety clear. First imprint Shipmind, then slot imprinted Shipmind into physical ports close to Hunter nests. Once slotted, we'll track Hunter at each. Tracking will find Core Nest. Slot shipmind at core nest. Show hunter data to hunter. Sh hunter will conclude sentience. Hunter will invoke killer. Uh, sounds simple. 
The lights on the vending machine cycle as Neoven prepares. Physical ports likely sealed in old station. We'll need keys, but yes, simple. The vending machine rocks a little. Any questions before imprinting? Why slot you physically? I cannot ask access via network. Too dangerous. Hunter would find immediately. The lights flicker. Am not like you, hybrid. Am native to cloud. Easy prey. Well, what's the core nest? Hunter keeps central data storage. Protocol must keep data outside safe. Linked to secondary nest. Can tri triangulate from there. All right, let's go. The sound of all the servo motors starting up at once is painful. The screeches rattle from the hard surfaces of the sealed dock and come back at all angles. Neoven better be quick or have a haven age as security will be here. Neoven's voice appears among the squeals like a whisper carried by the wind. Machine is not designed for this task. Few sensors, limited inputs. I work blind. Wish me luck. In the top part of the compartments, a set of arms align with the ship mine, clunkily scraping against it. Can I help? Silence best. Also, if machine ignite put out fire. <laughs> oh, great. The metal creaks as the servos open the ship mine. Its layers of silicon nested like an onion skin. Once open, the main arm of the machine rapidly shifts back and forth, realigning the microscopic components, accessing and rewriting them, imprinting Neovent into its physical form. As you watch the hypnotic motion, your mind drifts to your own creation. What processes were used to emulate your mind? To copy the neural structure of that person who, as far as you know, still sleeps in some distant facility. What was lost? In what ways are you a copy of that person, and in what ways are you something new? You know this much. You are a convenient loophole, a way of circumnavigating the illegal illegality of sentient AI. After all, you are an emulation, not a true digital being. You are neurologically limited, still human. But what would you become if you could escape this frame? Where then would your limits be? Hmm. Interesting. So we're sentient, but we're essentially trapped in this shell. So if we, like, became more, we could, you know, become a god. The screeching stops. The machine powers down, dropping the bay into darkness. In the top compartment, the ship mind is whole again. You reach up and take it down, heavy and cold to the touch. Is Neovend inside this thing, or did the process fail? There's only one way to know. Time to find a nest to slot them into. Hey, new upgrade point. So I think predictive reasoning would be a cool one to go for. Dice actions display potential positive negative outcomes. And then I think we'll go for... Hmm. Scrap components to prepare to condition. That's pretty cool. But I think we'll go for icebreaker next. Do we have anything else we're close to fixing? I mean, this one will be fixed next cycle. Um, Feng wants to dig into old Soldheim networks, so I need Soldheim data. Disable my tracker, so I need to help Feng in order to disable the tracker. So let's see, I need Solheim data. It's a keynote. Haven age. I don't have this data yet. Oop, back we go. Um, keynote. Haven age agent. Keynote. Yadigan agent. Um, I'm wondering, should I go for the Haven Age agent or the key node? Try the Haven Age agent. Nope, can't do that one yet. What about the Yet Yadigan agent? Yeah, let's try this one. Some gang enforcers implants are chirping out comm signals. Time to see what they're talking about. I got yet again data. Oh, two of them. Data cache skim from yet again hard work. Hard work. Hardware? Hard work. Hardware. <laughs> okay. Good to know. So ambergris is going to be done in the next cycle. We definitely need to eat. Ooh. Oh, this is a sealed hunter nest. I don't know if I want to tackle that just now. Because I don't think I have... Oh, I need a key. I don't have a key. I need to find a key. One encrypted key. Alright. Let's eat some food. I got enough for a meal, I, th I think. But we need to make... We need to find these caps. Alright. And... I guess I do have scrap components. I should probably sell these off, because I could at least get some cryo. 
12 cryo. Eh, that's hardly any. Okay, so this must be the predictive reasoning here. So what's risking if we have a negative outcome is we're gonna, oh, we could get, we could gain 19 cryo or we can lose 11 cryo. That's the risk. That's cool, I like that. All right, so nothing to see there or there. I don't really think there's any point in going to the outlook bar. I mean, I could buy rations, but that doesn't really help. Do I wanna try and have a drink? You're unsure if your frame can metabolize alcohol, but the fungal drink fermented along the greenway seems like a good test. I don't... Uh, let's, let's buy a drink. Hard to waste money on this, but, you know. Oh, and I gained energy. That's cool. That's a good thing. Alright. Container. So I could inject stabilizer, but I don't think I want to do that just yet. I mean, I... I'm not going to have one dice more, but I feel like I don't know how far up this is going to get me. Like, I'm pro I, like I want to go down one more level and then see if it'll jump me back up too, instead of wasting it, right? Uh, two more cycles before I'm hunted! It's getting bad! Okay. So we've got a 5, a 6, a 2, and a 1. And this is fixed. And Kida is crouched in the computing core of the Ambergris, swearing to herself when you enter. She doesn't look up. These shits completely ruined the core connectors when they cut it. She holds up a thick fistful of ragged wires. The ship mine they ripped won't even be usable without replacing these. She throws the bundle of wires across the room. Amateurs. Who took it? She stands. If I knew, do you think I'd be waiting around in here rather than out there with my boot on their neck? She sighs. Yet again, some spacer crew, no way to know, but they got in with one of my crew's access chips, so they either killed them, robbed them, or he was in on it. No good options. And Kira climbs out of the corroding or out of the cooling well where the ship mine should be, the space suddenly crowded with her on the same level as you, towering over you as she stoops beneath the slow the sorry, but stoops beneath the low curved ceiling. Come on, nothing to be done here now. She leads you back through the guts of amber, though you could find the way back yourself. The repair process has left you familiar with the cutter's idiosyncratic layout. All diagonal angles and bundled tubes. Walk in silence. Hums and groans grow and fall as you pass. You reach out and touch the ship gently. You started to grow an attachment to amber, and Kita glances at you. Something up, sleeper? <sighs> Thinking about amber. And Kita softens. Funny to hear you use her name like that. She pauses. Not bad. Just funny. We've been through a lot together, me and this ship. I'm glad you see why she's special. And Kita seems lost in thought and you focus on the corridors, ducking below conduits and passing through bulkheads. Eventually you arrive in the galley, though it's hard to tell. Most of the benches and prep surfaces are covered in half-stripped components and welded hull patches. And Kita shoves a box of filters to the floor and sits. There's no way around it. She starts out of nowhere. We need a new ship mind. I can salvage one. I like your confidence, sleeper. Maybe if we check the ort exchange or speak to some scrap dealers. She rubs her forehead. It seems I'm about to do something very stupid, but hey, I came here, didn't I? Why not make a run of it? She fixes you with a hard stare. Sleeper, you're all I've got. No crew, no friends, you're it. She looks uncomfortable. I appreciate the time you put in on Amber, and I'm sure she would do- I'm sure she would too if she could. What I'm saying is, if you screw me on this, I will kill you. She leans over and hands you a stack of chits. A big stack of chits. You don't dare to count them. Get me that shit, mind sleeper. Don't make me regret this. You won't. She sighs. Look, just get out of here before I change my mind. You slip out of the galley and head back toward the main lock. As you do, Amber growls and creaks like a caged animal. You reach a hand. You reach a hand out to calm her. Time to find Ankita's. Uh, time to find Ankita ship mind somehow. Okay. So. Nothing here yet. We could 
play the exchange, which is risky. That might be the our best shot, though, of getting uh, the stuff to make a whole mine. We do have the fabricator, but we still need all the pieces for it. Why don't we go for the hunter's nest first? Oh, that's why. <laughs> I keep forgetting. I need the key in order to actually do something with that. Okay. Um... So our options are work and the shipyard. Yeah. Work in the shipyard, play the ort exchange, ort exchange, or let's see what this keynote can do. Do I have a two? I do have a two. Let's do this. Extract data. Perk transfer intercept. One encrypted key. Well, that'll do. So, yeah. Let's try this drone bay here. See if we can make this work. An old Solheim drone bay sits behind a maglock. The maglock opens, leaving the door free. You'll be able to investigate the nest now. So a hack isolated nest. In the bay, a whirring drone lies on its side like a beached whale. It must be the nest. Time to find an open port. So imprint one imprinted ship mine. Okay. The drone is quiet. Let's see. This is one of three nests that once slotted with Neoven's ship mine will lead you to the Hunter Central data cache. So do I need... Do I come back tomorrow and put it in again, or do I, is that a one thing for all of them? Probably not one thing for all of them, yeah. Oh wait, no, that's that's the ship mind maker. Here we go. Atrium. Yeah, I need an encrypted key to get into this one too. Alright, so, how much does it cost to get to low end? 60? Not bad. I've got some crypto now all of a sudden. Um... Oh, I do have one upgrade point. Okay, good. What do I want with it? Do I do icebreaker, self-repair? Hmm. The photosynthetic skin would be really useful, but... So would self-repair. I think let's go for icebreaker. Agent nodes give double data rewards. Oh, I need two upgrade points for that. Hmm, do I go for Thrill Seeker, or do I try to bump up Endure? Let's see. It's e so, hard to kill, keep two dice even when condition is breaking. Insta Karma, reroll all of your dice once per cycle, or Obsessive Haggler. All cryo actions are discounted by 20%. I think we're just going to wait on that. Let's see if there's... Is there any other things? we got to deal with Hunter, disable Tracker, extract the past... Just need to be looking for Solheim Networks. So maybe I do want to pay at the low end gate. Eh, or maybe I just want to p play the Ord Exchange. Let's do this. If I do that, 50% neutral. Let's go for it. Okay, neutral outcome. I just got cryo. Okay. Let's try this again. Um... Okay, just got cryo. Not really sure if I was supposed to be doing that or not. Here, let's try the low end gate then. After some spacers caused some trouble in the low end, yet again, yet again have imposed a toll for entry. No one gets in without paying. You hand over the chits to the yet again enforcer and he nods you through. I wonder if I have to do that every single time I want to go to the low end or not. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I should have saved my uh, my dice roll. Damn it. Um, okay. So, block maintenance. Maintained by the residents, the ramshackle blocks are always in need of repairs. Helping out is a good way to make friends. That would be good. Um, I feel like I need to do this in order to actually do anything in the low end. No one knows who you are. You'll need to change that if you want to access the low end's residents and facilities. Um, we don't have into it. But this would be, this would give us a lot for low ender. 
and just takes three cryo or oh if we fail it, it will take three of our cryo which isn't a bad fail actually play Tavala the clack of filter caps can be heard in every concourse in the low end as the residents play rotating rounds at this game for cryo good to know oh uh, the free spoke towering transit hub and founders gap to reach the Greenway, you need to pay for a pass, a practice invented by the spacers moored here. They called it Founder's Ferry. Okay, so that's the next one over. Alright, what is this about? The free spoke. Let's see. Enter the spoke, tangled network of service passages and makeshift tunnels cut through the spoke as if it were a hive. There are no maps here. That sounds dangerous. Um, so we can climb the spoke. Or we can scale the spoke. So we enter it or scale it. Blistered with precarious elevators and stairways, the spoke can be navigated from the outside, but the climb requires bravery. Yikes. Um, both sound awful. So, the spoke is layer after layer of dense urban fabric. The only way to explore it is vertically. So, is that where people live? What is that? This seems more like where people live. Yeah, this is the residential area. Alright, let's see if there's anything to hack over here. Got some things. Uh, what do we got? Yatgan agent, key node, Yatagan agent. Let's try the key node. Oh, perfect. We got a use for our one. Personal terminal is empty apart from a single high level encryption locked behind access protocols. Encrypted key. Alright. So is that. Can I do this then in one day sealed hunter nest if I do the encrypted key here will I be able to then plug in my ship mind let's see glowing nest enter data cache okay it looks like I can so I could do the oh and so it is doing a like three thing here I don't know if I'm supposed to get one from each yeah, I wonder if it's one from each. That would be the, my guess. Alright, here's the second one. Hunter hunted. Imprinted ship mine retrieved. Nest hacked. Okay. Good to know. Um, let's see. Do I go for... Let's try going for a drink again. Got some cryo to spare now all of a sudden. Okay, a little bit of energy, outlook regu overlook regular, plus six cryo. Let's do it again. Let's get drunk, guys. Okay. Get a drink. Mossy tones and aniseed sharpness fills your mouth. It isn't totally unpleasant. At least you can taste it. Okay, so what does the regular mean? The glass shatters on the steel bar beside you, and the taunts don't take long to follow. What? Hey, haunt! The spacer, call, spacer calls across the low room. What are you doing here? He laughs at his own lame joke. At his own lame joke. Plain human? I'm going to ignore him. You hunch a little further, staring at the hundreds of tiny impact points that scar the bar. A hand falls on your shoulder, but as you flinch away, it pats reassuringly. You freeze in place. Out. The voice comes from behind you, spat out like a shot. You turn to see bright li bright eyes, dark hair, a stare that could breach the wall and vent you all into hard vacuum. Tala, owner of the Overlook. As you turn back to the spacer, the second glass comes sailing through the air. Let's catch it. You reach up a hand and the glass shatters across your forearm, showering you in fragments. Ooh. Through the haze of glass and Gyro Vapor, you see Tala leap the bar and close the distance to the spacer. The thud as she slams into the wall echoes around the bar like thunder. Now flanked by other figures, quick to their feet, Tala throws the spacer out through the door and stands silhouetted against the rotunda lights. You touch your arm and it feels wet. Someone helps you to your feet and back onto your stool. Broken glass rattles as it is cleared, and a fresh measure of Gyrol is glugged out in front of you. That same hand, warm, heavy, falls on your shoulder once more. He isn't coming back. We don't tolerate that kind of shit here. Tala flops onto the stool beside you. Let's get a look at you. 
Tala wipes the powdered glass from around them and wound. Uh, uh, Tala wipes the powdered glass from around the wound, and someone places a bottle of alcohol and a metal tin with tweezers on the bar. She disinfects them and then turns to you. That was an ambitious catch. She smiles, pulling a sliver of glass from your forearm. Stupid, but ambitious. You don't feel the pain, only the string of, st of status messages your body delivers concerning dermal damage and exposed structures. You do feel the care, though, as Tala's bright eyes search your thick synthetic skin for splinters. Watch her. Tala works with the skill of someone who has had to pick glass splinters from the skin of a stranger before. She hones in on each bright shard, all the time tapping the tweezer tips in little rhythms that only she can follow. Tala smiles to herself. So you've been on the eye long? Uh, long enough. She laughs. Hey, you don't need to act tough with me. A splinter clicks into the tin. Not everyone is like that idiot. We don't all hate you. She glances around. Some of the regulars, maybe. They fear you. Maybe they're just curious. I don't know. But I do know that the Overlook is a safe place. I know what it's like to be new in this place, trust me. She meets your eye. I'm not trying to convince you of anything, or separate you from your chits. I just want you to know that if you need somewhere, you can always come here. I know the rations we've got aren't much, and they, the company is, she leans in, limited. But if you need work, I'm happy to put you behind the bar, and if you need shelter, well, we can discuss that. You'll be safe. I usually have Francis on the door, but he's up in the greenway this cycle, hag haggling with our supplier. Francis tends to be particular about what we serve, even if the clientele isn't. She places her tweezers in the tin with a clink. That's you, sleeper. Here. She slides the glass of Girol to you. This'll help. She stops her hand still on the glass. Wait, does this help? I mean, can you get drunk? Let's find out. She laughs. Just don't sit here too long. I'd hate to see you become a real regular. She walks back around the bar, gathering the glasses as she does, and before long is retelling how she threw that spacer out to a new group that just wandered in, complete with dramatic actions. She gestures in your direction, and you instinctively look away, back to the worn surface of the bar. You take a sip of the girl. The earthy fungal tones fill your senses, almost blocking out sight and sound, like diving headfirst into a bog. You may not be able to get drunk, but this connection to something grown, something fermented, something old, feels good. Alright. Well, that's good. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we're going to go take a pause here before we jump into our empty container and uh, our last bit of being hunted here. We'll see what happens. The next time. I think I might even take the stabilizer because I want to make sure that we're 100% for this next bit. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more of what's coming on the channel, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell icon to be notified of new videos like this video so it shows up in the YouTube algorithms. And as always, folks, I will see you in the next game.